Hi there, it's Kathy Cates and Melissa Hines from the Institute for Pelvic Health. And you're watching Demystifying the Pelvic Floor, weekly videos providing real and simplified pelvic floor education for real clinical situations. We've got you covered. In this week's video, you'll learn why pain during sex is not normal, helpful questions to ask your patient, and why there may be an underlying pelvic health issue. Once you've ensured that your patient feels safe in their relationship, assess for trauma history, assess for vulvar skin conditions, labial conditions, any history of STI or active STI, vaginitis, medication, prescription medication use, here are some helpful questions to ask your patient during your subjective history to help with diagnosis. Are you able to touch your vulva, labia, or have someone else touch them? What do you do to make yourself feel good? And what do your partners do to make you feel good? Are you able to have an orgasm with foreplay? Are you able to have an orgasm with vaginal or anal penetration? How many partners do you currently have? When did you last have sex and what did you do? Do you use any type of lubricant for intercourse? Do you have any pain with vaginal or anal intercourse? And do you have pain with initial penetration? And if the pain is more initial penetration, you're gonna think more of an internal lubrication or moisture issue that can be hormonally driven, um, can be nerve related. Um, you also wanna rule out any vaginitis, STI and vulvar skin conditions. Do you have pain with deep penetration? The pain is with deeper penetration, you're thinking restriction or tightness in the posterior pelvic bowl or those deeper pelvic floor muscles. Um, to assess for that, you're going in with your index finger vaginally and you're going up to your PIP, so this area here, or your MCP, so the entire finger. And do you have pain with certain positions? Certain positions allow the pelvic floor muscle to elongate and relax better. So it's important to really note what positions are more painful than others. And a very helpful tip that Melissa and I use in clinic is to help our patients pause for a moment. Once their partner's finger, toy, or penis is inside of them, and to actually think about what does it feel like to be connected to your partner in this way at this moment? And then both of you taking a breath together. Um, and then quickly, I feel like we're always going over this in our videos, but the connection between the diaphragm and the pelvic floor is super important here, as Kathy mentioned with the diaphragmatic breathing. So every time you take that deep inhale, really feel that the low belly is expanding all the way down into the pubic bone. And as you're inhaling, imagine that breath traveling all the way down to the vaginal opening. Your sit bones are widening and you're creating space. And then exhale, things soften. Um, the diaphragm, as you inhale, it's going to descend down along with the pelvic diaphragm is going to descend it down. So this is super important with any pain condition and constipation so that you can really relax those pelvic floor muscles. And this is a helpful tip, especially with intercourse and with that initial insertion. So here are some clinical pearls for nurse practitioners. If you find hypertonic or tight muscles, think about things your patients can get started on right away. How about using a dilator? You can look below for links to dilators. And believe us, we've tested a lot. Don't go down that internet rabbit hole. Just look below. And using a dilator stretches the, the vaginal opening and helps to desensitize the tissue. We have a lot of nerve endings in the pelvic floor and this desensitization can be really helpful for a lot of patients with initial penetration pain. And consider a vaginal moisturizing routine. By providing moisture, you'll improve blood flow, oxygenation of the tissue to those hypertonic areas. And this creates a happy environment for those muscles and allows them to be more pliable. And also consider a lubricant. 
a good lubricant. <laughs> we, have, we have a good list of moisturizers and lubricants without any chemicals of concern. You don't want to run to the store and get like a KY jelly. Um, so look below. Melissa and I have spent so much time. We've done a lot of research. A lot of research. A <laughs> lot of research. So just look lubricant. below this, this video and you'll see a link for um, moisturizers and lubricants without any chemicals of concern. And that's a wrap. Did you like this video? If so, hit like and subscribe and please share with your colleagues. Comment below to let us know your biggest challenges in providing care for your patients with dyspareunia. And subscribe to our email list at instituteforpelvichealth.com to get your free guide, four tips for managing that challenging pelvic exam. You'll get access to our weekly pelvic health content. And be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, where we'll post more pelvic health tips. We're excited to announce that we are developing an online pelvic health course for mm. nurse practitioners. Our course will break down the pelvic floor so that you can confidently care for your patients with pelvic floor dysfunction. By simplifying the pelvic floor, we'll improve patient outcomes and your provider experience. Thanks for watching and spreading the word. Let's revolutionize the field of pelvic floor health. We'll see you soon.